I got to send the first episode, I remember very clearly, out of the blue. I hadn't heard anything about the project, I hadn't met James or Hoss at all, and they had seen a couple of shows which they felt had re represented the different kind of parts of Alex and, and reached out. And um, as an actor, you're always essentially looking for good writing, good story. That's the first thing which grabs you, and then you know you look at the, who pe the people involved. So this script just spoke for itself. I mean, it, that, it was a total no-brainer. I read it, loved it, immediately saw that this was something unique. It was this big, epic, ambitious show, but, but driven by beautifully nuanced and, and, and characters of real depth. Um, and then, of course, you look at James and Hoss and the team behind it, and then you think, what a mate, that they, their work, body of work speaks for itself. So, um, but yeah, I guess it's that. It was that sort of the, the, the mixture of scale and size and global uh, outreach, but also uh, beautifully written story and character. Yeah, I think also just the, the scripts had such a beautiful pace to them already, you know, that from first read. And also we got quite a lot of them mm. up front, which is, you know, quite rare as well on television. The dialogue was extraordinary from the beginning. And, and again, the team, sort of knowing that it was Hoss, and I think both our meetings with James Watkins, incredible director, um, you just had a feel that the project was going to be quite special. He's not a villain at all, and he's not a hero. I mean, he's like good writing always is, is often about the kind of grey area in between, and these guys are so far from writing stock characters. Um, he's essentially a man who's incredibly conflicted. This is the kind of characters which most people are drawn to, you know, people are trying to work it out. Um, he, he wants to lead a, a good and ethical life, and, and particularly at the beginning you find him and his um, partner Rebecca um, are very much establishing a kind of life of ethical finance and, um, you know, a real, a real sort of social conscience. Um, but he's also kind of haunted by this... Um, association with his family's criminal past and also his sort of Russianness as well, um, which he sort of mixes up and, and gets confused by. Um, he's both fascinated and, and compelled by his Russianness but also terrified of it because he associates it with criminality. So he's sort of running away from it but also kind of constantly being pulled back into it. Um, and that sort of sets the, sets the context of the story, really. He, that his then his journey is about being pulled into this criminal past, um, but he was. I mean, it's kind of hard to talk about in a nutshell because he is so complicated and so rich as we all are, and um, we we never really finished in the eight months of filming. We never really got to the bottom of uh, who they are, and there's still journeys to go. I think so. Yeah. I mean, as well as being in talking about Rebecca Harper, my character. I guess it's also, you know, the show, you know, is huge and epic and global and international and deals with, you know, all these huge different um, stories of crime and money laundering and human trafficking and <laughs> all kinds of, you know, vast subjects. Um, but it's also a very, like James was saying, it's a very human, simple sort of situation um, at the heart of it, of a guy who's struggling between two things. And for my character, I spend you know, a lot of the time trying to kind of um, pull him along the sort of the right path as mm. I kind of see it, and also not really knowing what's going on. So it's a, it's, I have a very different um, experience walking through this than, than James does as Alex and a lot of the other characters. Um, but it's, it's, it's a really, the relationship between them is really complex and um, and really real. Yeah. I mean, it's the, those kind of arguments you have at home, <laughs> kind of like with people, yeah. with family, are represented in a really honest and truthful, exacting way in this drama. I'd originally read it and pitched for it as a movie, as and and I, I think Babel had just come out, so the idea of doing these four stories, and then and then. James had read it separately and, and he said, don't you think this would make a great TV show? And then by then, you know, TV was suddenly becoming incredibly exciting. And, and so we sat around for several weeks and sort of came up with a storyline because the book is very, very factual and it, it creates, you know, it's got a wonderful tone because of, you know, obviously. Um, and, and, and it also, the concept of 
you know, the, the gangster, you know, I'd always loved gangster movies and the idea that it was always localised and, and in the 90s it was reaching sort of the end of, the, you know, the Sopranos and Goodfellas. It's really the decline of the Italian mafia in New York. And then suddenly reading this book, it was not only is the mafia still there, but it's become global and it's become corporate and it's, it's all over the world. And these people are doing business with each other just like bankers are or or, you know, entrepreneurs and stuff. And so there was, it suddenly felt like a very exciting new world in which to set a gangster saga. It was a long conversation and it was a difficult process. Not because he did his arm. <laughs> yeah, it was not that I, I didn't want to. It was just an awful lot to bite off initially. I was thinking, wow, you know, it's far longer than, you know, shot for 140 days. It's, that's like four features. Uh, so I was thinking, can I physically do it? Um, um, but I'm really glad that I have, and that, that authorship, really, the sort of the, the co-authorship between Hoss and I, it's been such a close collaboration from, really from, you know, from inception all the way through the development, all the way through the shoot. You know, we'd be talking two or three times a day. I'd be in Zagreb or Mumbai and we'd be on the phone. And, and uh, you know, I, I genuinely think, I don't think, I think we both can say this, that in terms of an authored piece, and how, how personal it feels to both of us in terms of having that sense of being able to create something and, and see it through. And, and I think it helps for the actors as well because it's not just like someone's come in sort of gun for hire. It's sort of in the, in the DNA of how you approach it. And, and um, uh, it's, in that regard, it's been incredibly fulfilling, I think. For what's both. amazing is his ability really to have eight hours of story in his head because I, I know sort of directors who even in an hour half thing, we'll forget half the script and they sort of forget scenes or where they belong and stuff. And, and you know, with James, it's just like, I, I look at what he's done and, and, you know, in terms of, and honestly, everything is so beautifully covered and every story nuance is there. And, and just the, the, the focus and attention, that's probably because we started off, sort of created it together and James mm. wrote with me and, and we were like, so there was, it really feels in that sense, um, you know, for, for a screenwriter, it's great to have a director who's really so in tune and, and, and I guess vice versa as mm. well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And what was also unique, unique about this show is that these actors would come on set and in their respective countries, they are gods, you know, like much, much bigger names than Juliet and I. They have <laughs> huge followings. Like Naw Nawazin, Nawazin Siddiqui in, in India is literally a Bollywood sort of, you know, royalty. Um, Alexis Obrekov in Russia, similar, Kyle Blatt in, in, in Brazil. So um, that also added this angle that, you know, they have their own profile in their country. So that will hopefully boost the show internationally. What you said about you know the different actors from you know all our friends now from all these different. I'm excited the fact for the fact that when it airs in Israel, Yuval and Oshri and mm. you know our castmates are going to be you know it's all going to be happening there. And then when it airs somewhere else, that's exciting. Just just sort of picturing different cast members in their countries having it air. Mm. That's cool. It's such an international project, and um, that's really unique. Truly international. Yeah. The only person who's doing, who's um, acting with an accent, is um, David Strathairn, who's playing an Israeli. And other than, and usually, you know, you might have a kind of, I don't know, like a Ray Winston playing a Russian mobster, you know. But we don't have any of that at all. We have every single person in every single respective country. I think we filmed in twelve countries, each speaking with their native language and often in that language. So a lot of it's subtitled. Um, so when we say it's a sort of you know, when shows claim to be international, it ain't a touch on this. This is the first truly international show I think there's ever been. Gina J, our casting agent, was just phenomenal. And, and also, there's, it's certainly in terms of the writing, those actors I think were so helpful because, you know, th there's always a danger when you're going into other people's sort of, you know, trying to write people from different countries that you fall into traps of cliches and whatever. And th those actors, particularly the Russians, were so great at sort of almost correcting Mm. some of that and, and also just meeting them and you know they, they, two of them played piano beautifully so there was this thing of all they're, and they're supposed to be our so-called villains and stuff I thought a scene with them with their families playing at the piano mm. was just so moving and it was their idea and it was so they, they sort of brought this authenticity which again I think is very similar to Misha's book with that thing of the research he's done and so it was really important not, not to A not to have goodies and baddies um, and, and really try to have every, you know, 
that, that keep creating this. But I think it's a Hitchcock thing about every villain is the hero of their own story, and and so that's what we try to do. Mm. And 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 really, it's the, what I'm proudest of is is the humanity in all of those characters. That that I think I hope that an audience will at some stage feel empathy for all of them from the smallest characters or whatever and whatever they do the next moment they do something very familiar and human and, and sometimes very touching mm. Mm. And, and I think that sort of makes me feel well you know tw 20 23 hours of the day they're actually no different to us it's it's sort of you know they, they take yeah. their kids to school they have birthday parties they have you know all of that stuff and and, and AMC and BBC were also very supportive I mean we had you know, com frank conversations up front about the language and saying, look, you know, it's an English language show, but if there are scenes of Russians, two Russians speaking to each other in Moscow, they're speaking Russian. And we were very, very definitive about that, you know, and the same in Israel, the same, the, you know, the, the same in Prague. So, and, and it's that sense, again, it's what I was saying about authenticity, you know, one of the things we took from the book, you know, that sense, it, you know, we really, really wanted to have this kind of, Kind of verite feel, but this this feeling that you could this is you're eavesdropping on a real world rather than it's a sort of gangster genre world, you know, and 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 also we took that from that sense of performance. So the first people I started working with were the Russian actors, and they that, those actors like Hoss was talking about the, the sense of understatement of performance, throwing away performance, and it's and that really set the tone for the series. Everything is just downplayed. There's something in the I don't know whether, what the, whether it's the schools they go to, the sort of the theatre schools or the traditions, but it's just, it's so beautifully underplayed. And just, so the constant refrain on set was less, 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 you know, just, just less, you know, and, and really trust the scripts, trust how speed for writing, trust the subtext of the script and never have to sort of sprinkle anything on it. And, 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 uh, and hopefully that really gives it a real kind of bedrock sense of reality.